To Ethiopia now, where at least 26 people have been killed in a drone strike in the Amhara region. Local media says the strike hit the town of Finot Salam on Sunday. It follows weeks of fighting between the army and rebels known as Fano. The group accuses the federal government of trying to weaken Amhara's local administration. And the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission says hundreds of people, mainly ethnic Amharas, have been arrested in the capital, Addis Ababa. Let's get more on this. We're joined by Teodros Tirfe. He's chairman of the Amhara Association of America and an advocate for the Amhara people. He's joining us from Charlotte, North Carolina. Thank you very much for your time. Firstly, what are you hearing from people who you're in touch with in Amhara about what's going on there? Well, thank you for having me on your program, um, Elizabeth. Uh, it's really unfortunate what's happening in, in the Amhara region right now. This is um, a war that should never have happened. Uh, in early April, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed decided uh, to uh, send in his military into the Amhara region uh, to disarm and dissolve the Amhara Regional Special Forces. This was without consultation with the Amhara people. This was a unilateral decision by Abiy Ahmed and also unconstitutional. What resulted was um, Amharas across the region protesting this action. But in addition to that, Abiy Ahmed began to attack Fanos in the Amhara region, which are very popular by the Amhara people who were there to defend Amharas against the TPLF invasion. Uh, and then Abiy Ahmed began to arrest dozens of journalists, politicians, human rights activists, now including uh, Amhara members of parliament. Okay. Uh, this war escalated recently in the past two weeks. Abiy has started using drones, um, heavy artillery and tanks mm -hmm. to shell cities. Thousands of civilians have, are reported to have been killed. As you said, in Fenerbahce, Salam, at least 70 Amara civilians have been killed. And um, so, and the drones are being used across the region right now by Abiy Ahmed. Okay, you are using the word war. I mean, the Ethiopian government recently ended a war with the Tigray People's Liberation Front. What about Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's concerns that as long as there are regional defense forces, there will be disunity in the country? Well, this, this this war and the war in, in the T, and, um, you know between Abiy Ahmed and the TPLF was not about regional forces. The war between Abiy Ahmed and the TPLF was the war over power. And to be frank, uh, Elizabeth, we never felt that that war was over because we felt in that and for that war to be over and for lasting peace to come to Ethiopia, that all stakeholders in that war needed to be come together in an inclusive manner to have a lasting solution. And that's in the cessation of hostilities agreement. It was uh, an agreement between the TPLF and Abiy Ahmed and his administration. It excluded the Amhara people as well as the Afar people from that negotiation. And we warned at that time that the war will continue because mm -hmm. the cessation of hostilities has not ceased. The guns have not been silenced in Amhara region. It was never silenced. So the, the fighting had continued in Amhara region. And it's unfortunate. If there was really an inclusive process that included all stakeholders, we, I don't think we would be where we are right now, um, you know, unfortunately. Okay. And uh, what we're asking right now, um, you know, Elizabeth, is for the international community Well, that's to, exactly what know, I was going to ask you about, because there are human rights organizations, including Human Rights Watch, saying that despite the, the growing violence that they have been documenting, that Ethiopia is regional, the international partners have remained largely silent. We know that the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, spoke with Prime Minister Abiy recently. Who has leverage with the Ethiopian government to resolve this fighting? Well, I mean, the international community has leverage. The United States, um, you know, government has leverage. Uh, leverage. Uh, the United, United Nations, as well as the European partners, uh, they can, you know, um, um, you know, stop any loans or um, uh, go from the World Bank and the IMF to go to the uh, Abiy Ahmed. He's desperately needing, you know, hard currency right now. Um, they can uh, uh, punish Abiy Ahmed by sanctioning um, him, himself and also the military uh, generals in his administration and other politicians that are, um, you know, uh, really taking part in these attacks against the Amhara people. So there is quite a bit of leverage. Um, the ICRC reported the, um, you know, well, put out a statement warning that hospitals and clinics in the Amhara region are now running out of supplies and unable to care for the wounded and the sick. So we really desperately need for the international uh, community to come together with a single voice, condemn Abiy Ahmed for the um, attacks against Amhara civilians, uh, hold him accountable, demand that his forces leave Amhara region and push for a negotiated settlement. If, okay. we don't, if this does not happen, this war is going to broaden beyond the Amhara region to engulf Ethiopia and eventually the broader Horn of Africa.
Okay, that is Teodros Tirfe of the Amhara Association of America. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me.